Hi guys, welcome to Techie DIY. Today's video is an electronics kit build of a little handheld DSO or digital storage oscilloscope from JYE Tech and it's called a DSO shell or DSO 150 kit. This was supplied by Banggood and the version of the kit is the 15001K which has all of the surface mount parts pre-soldered and it also includes a case. So this is what you get in the box. There is a user manual which is pretty good. It covers assembly, calibration and troubleshooting and the circuit diagrams are also included. Then we have the main board which has the microprocessor and the LCD display and then the analog board where most of the kit construction takes place. A case, a crock clip lead rather than a probe and a bag of components which we need to sort out just like that. The first step was to test the main board by plugging in a 9 volt power supply. For some unknown reason the kit doesn't come with a power lead so you have to supply your own. It's a 5.5 stroke 2.1 millimeter DC barrel connector, which is quite common. That all worked fine. So the first component to be installed was the test signal terminal. The PCB pins were bent at 90 degrees and then it was installed and soldered to the PCB. Next, the optional power connector was installed and soldered. Then the slide switch. And four push button switches. The pin header was installed. Then the main board was powered up to check the operation of the push switches. R30 was then removed as this was installed just for testing. The next step was to assemble the analog board. First the resistors were identified using the resistance range on a multimeter. The first set were inserted into the board using the silk screen as a guide. and soldered or soldered into position. Cut off the excess leads and the process was repeated for the remaining resistors. Next were the ceramic capacitors. And then I installed the trimmer capacitors. These are just little capacitors that you can vary by turning the screw in the top. Next came the slide switch, soldering the tabs on the case first, then the pins, then the electrolytic capacitors. The negative lead is marked on the case with a stripe and the positive lead is longer. I've changed the soldering iron tip here as the other one wasn't transferring the heat properly and making it difficult to solder. This is an Antex TCS temperature controlled soldering iron which I've had for longer than I can remember. Next up was the BNC connector and I used a gas soldering iron this time just to make sure I had plenty of heat. Then the two final components on the analog board were 10 pin headers in positions J2 and J3. I soldered the rotary encoder to the small PCB. And then it was time to assemble the front module. So I removed the protective cover from the LCD display fitted the LCD display into the front panel, 
The backing was removed from the double sided tape and the main board folded over. The rotary encoder board was fitted to the main board and then the two were screwed to the front panel making sure the LCD display stayed in the correct position. The pin header was then soldered to the rotary encoder board and then it was time to attach the analog board to the main board and check the voltages at the points shown in the instruction sheet. These were all fine, so I moved on to calibrating the probe by following the procedure in the manual and changing the two trimmer capacitors. I inserted the BNC connector and switch through the holes in the small top panel, fitted the analog board to the back panel, and screwed it down. Then I fitted the small bottom panel to the front module. I combined the front and back with the test terminal inserted into the slot, the pin header located into the socket and the small back panel located into the back cover. The front frame was attached matching the patterns on the two sides and then it was screwed together. Finally, last but not least, the knob was pressed on. So let's have a look at the controls. There is the on off switch on the bottom. The switch on the top selects the coupling, AC, DC or ground. There is a test signal output of one kilohertz. Then the sensitivity or vertical position button, the time base or horizontal position button, the trigger button and the OK or hold button. The dial is used to adjust the selected parameter. To reset the vertical alignment, set the coupling switch to ground and then hold the volts per division button for about 3 seconds. To centre the horizontal position, hold the seconds per division button for about 3 seconds. And to centre the trigger level, hold the trigger button for about 3 seconds. To change the sensitivity, press the volts per division button to highlight the current value and then use the dial to change the scale. Press the button again and then the dial will change the vertical position of the waveform. So you'd use this to examine a particular part of the waveform by increasing the scale and scrolling to the position of interest. To change the time base, press the seconds per division button to highlight the current value and then use the dial to change the scale. Press the button again and the dial will change the display position in the capture buffer. Pressing the trigger button selects between the trigger mode, trigger level and the trigger edge. When the trigger mode is selected you have the choice between auto, normal and single. To show measurements, press the OK button for a couple of seconds. Let's have a quick look at some of the things we can do with it. This is an Arduino controlling a servo, sweeping it backwards and forwards. The scope is monitoring the output pulse to the servo and the width of the pulse determines the servo's position. This is a microwave motion detector. Its output goes high when it detects movement and the red LED turns on. We're monitoring the output of the module with a scope. The trigger is set to single and rising edge so that we can capture the waveform as it turns on. And then this is the scope monitoring the output of a phone playing music. So in summary, this is a good little kit. It's not that difficult to construct. The scope can measure up to 200 kilohertz and 50 volts peak. If you don't have an oscilloscope, then this would make a good introduction. It is limited by its bandwidth, but it's perfectly fine for tinkering with Arduino modules, audio, and perhaps even automotive projects. JYE Tech have a good online support forum and they do release firmware updates frequently. I stored this kit for a while before building it and the latest firmware now has quite a few improvements. I contacted them and they sent me the latest firmware update within a couple of hours. One thing to be aware of is there have been quite a few fake kits on sale in various places and to use the latest firmware updates you need a license key from JYE Tech. 
so if you don't have a genuine product then you can't use the latest updates. I got the kit from Banggood who do sell the genuine product and I'll put the link in the description. So I hope you found this useful, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.